David attacked you too. I forgot to mention you on the list. Um, you must be doing something right. You wrote a book. I forget the exact title. How to defeat ISIS? Defeating jihad. Defeating jihad. Right. The winnable war. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And I read the book, and here we have. Let's look at America alone. Um, and this goes to the issue of extreme betting. Right. Okay. Chattanooga, Pulse nightclub, Orlando, Boston, Boston. bombing. Okay. San Bernardino. Right. Fort Hood, and I can keep going. Now we've got France and Belgium, and oh, Donald Trump was right about Sweden. Uh, and you see, you see the impact. Radical Islamic terrorism. Isn't it unbelievable our last president couldn't say it? And I ask you, how is this war winnable when the FBI tells us there are a thousand ongoing investigations right now in America in all 50 states? The only way you can win any war, Sean, is when you are allowed to talk truthfully about who the enemy is. Imagine if uh, we're ready to storm the beaches in Normandy, okay? And they, they say to all the guys, the GIs, is your M1 ready? Are you squared away? Are your laces tight? Okay, you're ready. Oh, by the way, when you hit the beachhead, just remember, don't say the word Nazi because you could offend a German. Well, I mean, it's a perfect right? example. Right? Yeah. You would have been court-martialed if you'd said that. Stop That's the, the last eight years. Here, here's my fear. If you go back to the 9-11 Commission report, okay, it said, and the, I didn't agree with all of it, but the one thing I agree with, they were at war with us. We weren't at war with them. That's a right. direct quote. Right. But the problem is we had all these indicators. We had uh, the, the embassy bombings. Uh, in, in Tanzania and Kenya, we had the Cobar Towers, we had the USS Cole, the Fur Tra First Trade Center bombing, all these indicators. Are we going to look back now because of eight years of going back to a pre-9-11 mindset? Are we going to cite Chattanooga, Fort Hood, Boston, uh, the Pulse nightclub, and Fort Hood, and San Bernardino, and say, oh, we had no idea it was coming? Is it a, is it a matter of if, not when, they want to hit us big? Let's just look at history. A man called Osama bin Laden, twice before 9-11, in 1996 and 1998, openly declared war on the United States. And we didn't pay attention. Right. Um, to quote, in, I, I teach a course on understanding jihad, and uh, there's a quote I use from a Holocaust survivor to open the course. And this is a man who'd seen his whole family destroyed in World War II. His, his wife, his children die in death camps, in labor camps. And somebody asked him a really facile question. They said to this old man, so what is your one take home? You've lived through all of this horror. What's the one thing you, you want to recommend people understand about World War II and the Holocaust? And he says, oh, that's easy. When a group of people repeatedly say they want to kill you, Believe them. sooner or later, you should take them seriously. Agreed. Right? So let me, here's my question, and, and we only have a minute left. So the president comes forward with the extreme vetting executive order. We're going to get a new one either late this week or early next week, and I know they're rewriting it, which I think was the right thing to do, in light of the fact they went judge shopping, and they went to the Ninth Circuit, the most liberal circuit in the country. But here's, why do you think, I do not understand any reluctance or resistance that we vet people that are guests into our country, and why are so many people on the left willing to gamble with the lives of all these people here and all these people watching at home? Two questions. What is the logical critique to saying we want to make our immigration policies better? What, what's the logic? We just want to make them more efficient. What, what is the argument against that? And I ask people... That we're discriminatory, right, th blah, blah, blah. No, okay. But how about this? When you go to sleep at night, I don't care whether you live in the South Side or whether you live here in Georgetown, when you go to bed at night, do you lock the front door? Yeah, and then I put my gun next to my bed <laughs> and I go to sleep. Yeah. So, if you do that, then surely the border is our front door. Surely we should have a control as to who enters our house. This is the house of America. And the idea that we don't control it is crazy. I think Dr. Gork and I have become very close friends. And I think we're really lucky to have somebody that understands the nature of, of evil in our time, which is a clear and present danger to our country, working with the administration. My friend, good to see you. God bless you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, so Thank you guys.